Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're looking at stims which are often overlooked by new and intermediate players and with the stims case are much more accessible now than say a year ago. Before thinking about stims themselves, we need to understand two important skills that relate to their effects first, which are metabolism and immunity. Metabolism, which fortunately is one of the fastest levelling skills, reduces the time of stims negative effect, as well as from provisions, by 1% per level, up to 50% at elite. This is great because some of the debuffs can be quite nasty, and it helps to reduce the impact of energy and hydration debuffs as well. Immunity is a bit trickier, as most players will hardly level this at all through regular play. However, this does the same thing, reduces the negative effects of stims, food and drinks by 1% per level. I'll cover more on how to level this at the end of the video. Between these two skills, you can meaningfully cut down the time of negative effects from what you see listed on the stim itself. But let's get started with the most obvious stims, the painkillers. There are four of these, morphine, propotol, L1 and adrenaline, in order of how long they are active. Despite morphine being the longest at just over 5 minutes, the vast majority of players choose the propotol instead at just over 4 minutes. This is because they tend to be a very similar price on the flea market and propotol gives you plus 1 HP regen per second without the energy and hydration debuffs from morphine. The regen is really useful if you have your arm blown off by a shotgun shell for example and a small amount of spillover goes on every limb. This takes forever to heal with a health kit, but Propotol will top them up easily given a little time, especially if you're already doing something else like using a CMS kit. As this is active for 300 seconds, technically speaking you can get 300 HP back with it if it's healing for the whole 5 minutes. This is useful if you're needing to run with broken legs for example. The other secondary stats are useful but not critical. Health reduces the chance of fractures and vitality reduces the chance of bleeds. The metabolism buff though is kind of interesting as although it doesn't affect active debuffs, if you use other stims afterwards it reduces their negative effects as if you had that level of metabolism, one to bear in mind. Otherwise, Propitol has no stat based debuffs, just the tunnel vision and tremors effect after it's finished for 30 seconds base. Now the L1 is a painkiller as well, but much shorter at 120 seconds so it's less useful. It adds 30 to your max stamina, but unfortunately this doesn't actually give you any stamina as you can see from the bar jumping lower when you use it. We get endurance and strength secondary bonuses, which as well as the usual boosts to move speed and stamina for strength this helps with weight. My overweight threshold went from 24.8kg to 27.3kg at 30 base strength, so an increase of 2.5kg. Personally, I don't think this is very meaningful with the active time of only 120 seconds. The downside is only energy and hydration though, totaling negative 27 of each before any reductions. Adrenaline is our final painkiller and with only a 60 second active time is a stim for use under immediate fire. This combines with 15 seconds of plus 4 HP per second healing, which is 4 times faster than a propotol, but be aware this only heals for 60 total, so it's just for a little but fast boost. The other stats don't really do much. I had a look at the recoil control bonus of plus 10, which affects horizontal recoil, but it only reduced it by about 3%, going from level 8 to level 18 for me, and it was unnoticeable, even with a weapon like the MCX that has slightly higher than normal horizontal recoil. Another option is you can stack the health regen with Propotol for plus 5 in the first 15 seconds if you get really hurt. Next up is the ETG, or the green stim as it's called, which is Tarkov's best healing stim. You get 6.5 HP per second for 60 seconds, which is 390 total, and faster than even the adrenaline propotol combo, as well as a 0.5 energy recovery, but you end up losing that and more afterwards in the debuff. As we also get 20 metabolism and immunity, technically this is useful to use before other stims with debuffs in the same way that Propotol is, but because of the ETG's price it just makes it a nice bonus if you're using it alongside other stims at the same time. As you might imagine, you can stack the heals with Adrenaline and Propotol if you really want to. The ETG can get expensive on the fleet, so it's worth bearing in mind that you can barter it with Therapist 3 using 4 shampoos. Next we have two stims that are very similar, Zagustin and AHF1. Despite the slightly different descriptions in the game, both stop light and heavy bleeds and prevent further bleeding for 60 seconds with the AHF1 and 180 seconds for Zagustin. Although Zagustin is the more well known of the two, probably because you can buy it from Therapist Level 4 and it's been in the game longer, AHF1 is usually much cheaper on the flea market and for their primary purpose they do exactly the same thing. Almost everybody uses these in a reactionary way, i.e. once you have a light bleed and two heavies whilst under fire, pop one of these out and you're good to go. Although Zagustin prevents bleeds in the future for much longer, I don't think that extra value is anywhere near as important in my opinion. 
Augustine also has much worse side effects. With tremors after 170 seconds, it lowers the metabolism skill by 5, and it has a hydration recovery debuff of 56 total before reductions, versus AHF1's 36. Personally, I've swapped over to using AHF1, and although I don't tend to use these all that often, when you do need them, they're invaluable. Next up, we have the two damage reduction stims, P22 and Meldonin. P22 reduces non-head damage by 10% for 60 seconds, and secondarily gives you 30 health, vitality, and stress resistance. Because the time is so short, it's a pretty niche stim, and the after effects of minus 10 endurance and minus 0.8 stamina for a minute really suck. Meldonin, on the other hand, is a bit different, because it lasts for 900 seconds. Yes, that is 15 minutes. This is the second longest acting stim in Tarkov, and also gives you the minus 10% damage except the head buff. Not only that, we also get 0.5 stamina regen, again for 15 minutes. This is cool because it's like a mini SJ6, which helps both regular and arm stamina recovery, letting you run and hold weapons in ADS for much longer. The downsides here are energy and hydration recovery, but so long as you're prepared for the increased drain on those, it's a pretty good stim. By the way, if you were wondering, it doesn't seem like you can stack the damage reduction between these two, although I tested it by falling off something rather than getting shot specifically. While we're on the topic of Meldonin, there are three other stims that give stamina recovery. SJ6 is the king of the category with plus two stam per second for four minutes, as well as giving you an extra 30 max stamina like L1 from earlier, and it doesn't really give you any downsides, some tremor and tunnel vision, but no stat debuffs. This is typically used to get into places like Shoreline Resort, as the stamina recovery works against the stamina loss from running and takes significantly longer to run out than without using it. 3BTG gives plus 1 recovery, also for 4 minutes, as well as 30 attention for faster looting, 30 perception for further hearing, and 10 strength for a bit of move speed. In return we get an energy recovery debuff totaling minus 30 base and tremors after a delay, so it's not that bad either. Finally we have Obdolbos, which is the longest acting stim in the game at 1800 seconds, or 30 minutes, giving plus 0.5 stamina recovery per second like Meldonin. You also get 10 Endurance and Strength, 20 Stress Resistance and 20 Charisma. However, on the downside we lose Memory, Intellect and Attention, which to be honest is meaningless outside of the loot speed from Attention. But we also get a 25% chance for Pain, Bleeding, Hydration and Energy Recovery debuffs, Damage Taken Increased by 20% and the Tunnel Vision effect. The last two, Increased Damage and Tunnel Vision, are the more problematic ones, as at first glance there's not much that you can do about them other than wait them out. However, this is a scenario where the metabolism boost from Propotol can help a bunch if used beforehand, as removing a further 20% from the time of the debuffs can be really useful. Secondly, Propotol has a tunnel vision effect all of its own. What this means is that once the painkiller goes away and the 30 seconds of Propotol tunnel vision finishes, it actually clears the effect on screen, despite the debuff from Obdolbos still being active. Pretty cool. Interestingly, the stamina recovery on all four of these stims can be combined however you like, even Meldonin and Obdolbos. It doesn't show these two on the status bar because they're exactly the same buff, but they do work together practically. Moving on, we have some more specific ones last. I haven't referred to the SJ1 yet because I personally think it's pretty underwhelming. All we get is 20 strength, endurance and stress resistance, which sure gives us a little more weight as per the L1, but it's only 180 seconds, so kind of of limited use. The Mule, however, is awesome with plus 50% weight capacity for 15 minutes, allowing you to get out of raid much more easily when super overloaded with loot. The stamina stims do help a bit in this regard, but once you get to a certain weight, your PMC can't even walk without losing stamina, which is where the Mule comes in, a must-have for the injector case. The downsides of the Mule are minus 0.1 HP per second and 9% increased non-head damage, but the HP can be easily offset by a Propotol. The increased damage, I guess you can either just live with it if you're taking a safe route out, or in theory combine it with a Meldonin to end up with plus 1% damage reduction between the two. The last two are firstly the SJ9, which is a gold dust unicorn item that is practically never seen. The idea is to lower body temperature and be harder to spot on thermals, but it's never used right now. The other is the XTG12 Antidote, which cures cultist poison. If you're farming them and you want to maximise space, you can keep that in your stims case, otherwise Augmentin works as well and is cheaper. So, what to use from this list? From my own personal experience and seeing what others have done, the stims that you should definitely be using as a baseline are Propotol, ETG, AHF1, and the Mule. Typically, I have a Propotol on the hotbar, and the others are in the injector case in the secure container for when they are needed. Adrenaline can be an alternative, but the painkiller effect is pretty short, so just make sure that you don't get caught out. SJ6 is really good if you're targeting specific areas to run to at the start of a raid, and Meldonin is a superb general stim for late game optimal play, but as these two are more like 50-60k, to 60K, I certainly don't use them in every raid. 
I'm also really interested in the Obdol boss slash Propotol combo, but the potential for getting 20% increased damage 1 in 4 uses is kind of a turn off. Regarding the injector case, this is obviously pretty crucial to using stims in an efficient way, but if you can get access to it, it's likely one of your most valuable cases as it multiplies the effectiveness of your secure container dramatically. For standard account players, having the ability to keep multiple stims in one slot removes the need to have more med items saved elsewhere, which is super handy. You can get a stims case from handing in chemical part 4 to therapist. Historically, handing it to Skier was always the better choice, but now, so long as you can manage the negative rep from him, it can be efficient to get your stims case this way. It's not actually necessary to complete his makeup quest, hell, I still haven't done it now, so you kind of take out a loan of a million rubles from Skier to pay for it and never pay him back. At the beginning of this video, we referenced immunity and how it acts like metabolism for reducing debuffs. This skill goes under the radar fairly significantly and leveling it is not well understood. Mine sat at zero for most of the white because I'd never really paid attention to it either. The way it works is any time that you get a red debuff from a stim or a provision, when that effect goes away, you then get credited experience into immunity based on the amount of time that the debuff was active. The funny thing about this is because Propotol and Morphine are probably the most used stims, most players have almost no immunity because these don't actually have any time-based stat debuffs. The same goes for SJ6, none of these give immunity experience. Almost every other stim does however, as well as a handful of food items. For example Croutons with their 60 second hydration debuff gives 0.3 experience and Mayo with 300 seconds of metabolism debuff gives a decent 1.8 points. Because it's based on time, half of a mayo gives 0.9. Whiskey, vodka and moonshine do work too, but they're expensive, so the final two practical ones are the Pevco beers, which give 0.7 points in 120 seconds, and max energy for 1.8 points in 300 seconds. Max energy is fairly efficient because they are one of the cheapest items, as well as being long enough to avoid any diminishing returns from skills. In general, you have to be a little bit careful, as although you get more points from longer effects such as the Obdol boss, if you die before the debuff finishes, you get no points at all, so there is a balance to be had. One final thing about stims, the samples quest. This is an annoying quest that gatekeeps one of the most well used face shields in the game, and the easiest way to do it is to run your scav a bunch and use the moonshine scav case until you get them. Some people try hitting stims rooms on labs and med rooms across Tarkov, but my philosophy is that if I can get it by doing stuff out of raid, then I can spend time in raid doing other things and just wait for it to complete itself. The same theory goes for tank batteries and it's worked to treat in all my wipes so far. So next up, go and check out my video on Tarkov's healing items as some of their features may surprise you. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.